In studio with me is Harley Ruda. He is running for Congress in the 48th District of California. Harley, welcome to the program. Glad to be here, thanks. All right, now uh, you're in a really interesting situation against a really interesting opponent. Right. <laughs> so this is a district the Democrats have never won, is that right? That is correct. But right now, uh, you are either even, according to the, the um, not the pundits, that's not fair, to the people who track races, okay, and do so professionally, or leading. So uh, you're in a position to do what no Democrat has ever done before. And, and that is partly uh, because of the changing circumstances, and partly because of your opponent, and partly because of you, right? So let's talk about your opponent first. Sure. Uh, he has been described as Putin's favorite congressman, Dana Rohrabacher. Okay, so why? why? Why why do people describe him that way? And why is his approval rating in the 30s now? Yeah, Kevin McCarthy uh, stated at a get together for the Republican uh, caucus that he believes two people are paid by Putin, Donald Trump and Dana Rohrabacher. Dana's had this long term affinity for Russia. He's been to Russia numerous times on taxpayers' money. He's been caught up in Mueller's investigation. And it's finally coming back to haunt him because people are wondering, what the heck does this have to do with our district? What the heck does this have to do with creating jobs? Why are you spending so much time on Russia? Yeah, and uh, and by the way, just so you guys are clear, McCarthy is not a Democrat. He's a Republican majority leader, and he thinks Rohrabacher is being paid by Putin. That's a hell of a thing. That was leaked in a, in a story that came right. out. Uh, and so he's also uh, associated himself with other unsavory characters, not just Vladimir Putin. There's a, apparently a guy he endorsed in Huntington Beach. Uh, uh, what's that story about? Well, it's a it's a woman. Oh, and, it's a woman. Okay. Yes, and she's got uh, ties to right wing nationalists. Uh, has put forth some uh, skeptical statements on her social media feed, and uh, it's just one of many examples where Dana Warbacher has gone out too far, too extreme, and and uh, certainly needs to be held accountable for those actions by making sure we elect somebody else on November 6th. Yeah, there's those ties, and then of course, as usual, and this is not just Rohrabacher, but mm -hmm. there's the corporate ties, and so, and there's the, the super PACs, and there's all the people giving him money. One of them is the, the gun lobby. How much have they given Rohrabacher? I believe the NRA has given him over $40,000, and when you add in other uh, big corporate money, whether it's oil and gas, big pharma, it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that he has taken. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so you can begin to see why uh, Rohrabacher right. is not overly popular, even in what has been historically Republican district. Yeah, and, and let's really talk about the gun lobby for a minute, because the money he's taken is very consistent with his views. He was caught up uh, recently with This Is America, where he supported the training and arming of students in school to protect schools in the case of gun violence. And he came out and he corrected his statement that he wasn't talking about kindergartners or middle school. He was only talking about high school students being trained and armed and that there'd be a limited number of guns available to them on premises. That's how wacky he's getting. He says, I saw it with my own eyes. It was uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's uh, show on Showtime, Who's America? And, uh, and yeah, he said, yeah, let's arm the little kids uh, with weapons so they could right. shoot each other. That's Rohrbacher. Okay, but he's literally paid to say that in a sense by, by uh, all the campaign donations he's getting from the NRA. What's your position on guns? I actually think what California has done should be the prototype for all of our country. So California has 10 day waiting periods, it has background checks, it's banned assault rifles, it's banned high capacity magazines, it's made sure uh, that those that are on the no fly list can't buy guns. So California has a really good basis for what we need to do on a national level. But the problem is if you don't have consistency from state to state on, uh, on how to address gun violence, then you're going to have the ability for guns to go across borders. Yeah, it drives me crazy when people talk about Chicago as if Chicago is an island. As Trump right. would say, surrounded by water, big water. No, it's in the middle of the country. Okay. They could just bring in guns nonstop. It doesn't matter what the laws in Chicago are on guns. If it turns out you could buy them in Illinois or neighboring states and just drive them in. So we gotta do it nationwide, but you're running for US Congress. So that's that's where we can make the, obviously the biggest but, but impact. But you bring up a good point. And you know, my understanding in Chicago, one third of the guns that have been confiscated there came in from Indiana, to your point. That you can't have gun legislation to prevent gun violence if it's inconsistent across the country. Absolutely, so let's talk about some of your other positions. 
So for, before, actually, as I get to that, I looked at your bio, mm -hmm. and I know Mark Thompson interviewed you last time on Rebel Headquarters, right. and he's another one of our hosts, and I can see why he liked you so much. Uh, you, when you uh, were in the business world, you invested in things that where you'd have less trash in landfills uh, and uh, easy to use portable water filters and all these environmental things, because Mark's a huge environmentalist and and he won't let you bring plastic water bottles uh, in, into his house. Right. And so as I saw this, I was like, oh, you're tailor made for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so let's talk about the, it, the environment. Uh, what's your stance uh, there? Yeah, another very clear difference between me and Dana Rohrbacher. So Dana Rohrbacher not only thinks that climate change is a complete fraud. Uh, he also supports offshore drilling in California and off of uh, Orange County. Uh, I don't support offshore drilling. I also believe that climate change is the uh, number one issue facing humankind. And I always talk about it in terms that you know where we have built our homes and our cities and our farms are based on predictable weather patterns. And if you change those predictable weather patterns by heating up the temperature of the earth, Literally, where we have built our homes and our cities and our farms can become obsolete in a really short period of time. So this is an infrastructure issue well beyond the widening of the 405. Yeah, and so it, it affects business interests, it affects the economy, our jobs. Um, it also affects us, right? We, yeah. you know, other than the businesses and the farms, et cetera, we also live here. And, yeah. and that's why I'm always amazed by guys like Rohrbacher, yeah. who, who it, seem to have no concern about the future. Yeah, it's even more pervasive than that. This is the number one threat identified by the US military is climate change. And there are estimates right now that by 2050, we're just talking 32 years, that there could be 200 million climate change refugees around the world. That's the biggest refugee crisis since World War II. Yeah, and I know what the Republican uh, solution to that is. Oh, just build bigger walls. Uh, but uh, yeah. that's it's not gonna get the job done. It's not the right solution. So uh, speaking of solutions, let's go to healthcare. Sure. Um, what's, what's your stance on that? I, I support uh, open Medicare for all. And what I mean by that, because you gotta understand 18.5% of our GDP is tied to healthcare. So we know almost one fifth of our entire GDP is tied to healthcare. We gotta make sure that when we make moves in the right direction here, uh, we do it correctly. And so by opening up Medicare for all, that would allow uh, individuals, families, and businesses to buy into Medicare. Uh, which would help Medicare. Medicare has shown they can deliver quality uh, health care uh, at a, about 65 cents on the dollar compared to the private insurance market. But you'd still have a private insurance market. Got to reinstate the individual mandate as well. If you can afford insurance, you should be buying insurance. And you got to take the shackles off Medicare's ability to negotiate big pharma prices, drug prices, especially for our seniors. Yeah, that was a story that we unfortunately didn't get to at the Young Turks today, but that was a big story that we, we were hoping to do. Uh, that the Democrats, if you guys win back Congress, are that's gonna be one of their top priorities to make sure that we can negotiate uh, drug prices. Now, unfortunately, under Democratic and Republican presidents, it's been promised and not delivered. But um, but I wanna understand your proposal a little bit better. When you say Medicare, open Medicare for all, so it's not, you, you wouldn't make it Medicare for all for everyone uh, as for the whole country in your proposal, and it's, it's more like the public option, is that right? Exactly, that is correct, right. with, with adding, in, reinstating the individual mandate and allowing drug prices to be negotiated. And, and you gotta remember too that Medicare is servicing right now a population that has a greater demand on healthcare services just by the age of that population. So if we open it up with the public option and allow people to buy in, that too will bring, bring prices down and create a more competitive environment. One more quick follow up on that. Do you think businesses would then go, okay, that's it, we're not giving healthcare, go get it from, from Medicare? And I don't know that that's a bad thing. It would open up the ability to pay higher wages for employees. I don't, what, do you have a take on that? Well, there's some businesses that are already doing that now because of the cost of healthcare. They're, they're discontinuing and making that accessible to their, to their employees. So we've gotta figure out what's the best way to get 100% of Americans on a healthcare plan. And this is certainly a big step in the right direction. So Harley, one more uh, topic for you, uh, money out of politics. Uh, do you, what's your stance on it and do you have uh, a particular proposal that, that you're in favor of? 
Yeah, it, and I can tell you as a first-time candidate, the amount of money that is involved in politics and the process of raising money, it needs to be addressed. And we need campaign finance reform. We need to make sure that and Citizens United is supported in its efforts to get uh, money out of the system. And I'll share this very quickly. In 2010, when Citizens United was passed, and that's the decision that says corporations are people, even though no one ever held hands with a corporation or made out with a corporation. Well, Mitch McConnell might have. Mitch might have. <laughs> uh, but that decision, when it was made, that year there was about $140 million of outside money, dark money, soft money, that was in the election process. 2016, it was $1.6 billion. So if we wanna take back our democracy, if we want everyone's individual vote to matter, we've gotta get that kind of money out of politics. Yeah, no, it's uh, absolutely insane right now. There's another story from today where Beto O'Rourke running against Ted Cruz in, in Texas, dark money group uh, is spending a ton of money pretending to have, they, they were trying to get a, a voice actor to pretend to be the Ayatollah of Iran supporting Beto O'Rourke. And you, we don't know who's spending the money to, to lie to the people of Texas that way. Right. This system is insane. Yeah. So we absolutely have to change it. Now, we're out of time, but I want everybody to know the, the website, obviously, and how they can help, harleyforcongress.com, and there's the links to donating and volunteering as well. Uh, I know that Donald Trump couldn't keep Harley Davidson in, in the country, but you can send Harley Ruta to Congress. And so, Harley, thank you so much for joining us at Rebel Headquarters, appreciate it. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching this free clip of Rebel Headquarters. Don't forget to become a TYT member today for more exclusive content. Join now at tyt.com slash join.